it's changed the whole culture of the classroom and the whole culture of our school because we're creating that environment where all students are able to succeed and participate in the discussions and the math learning. We all should be on the same page due to the fact like the system really don't care about us. So we have to work together to get our education up and running. I think a lot about when Bob Moses would talk about the sharecroppers making the demand for the right to vote. And he said that's what young people today have to do, but that young people today, unlike the sharecroppers, are not invisible. It's not hidden, right? This is happening right in front of us. You know, we walk through schools that are falling apart. We see curriculum that's not working. We're all fighting similar fights. Like, that's an important piece of organizing. You cannot just fight the fight in your city. I expect it's just gonna change everything. Cause the moment you go to another city or like you look on the news, you get to see they going through the same thing I just went through. We just had a tough fight. How can I offer support? And what we want is for the federal government to have direct involvement in the education in the schools around this issue of sharecropper education and the, the young people who are really left out in the current public schooling of the country, in particular around their math literacy. This requires us to really cultivate the humans on the ground in a really systemic fashion and not simply put in a quick fix, a quick program. But you gotta have the temerity to actually try something new. Math literacy creates the space for all students to be able to participate and to have their success within the mathematical learning. From a psychologist standpoint, math literacy also involves overcoming the phobia that most people have about mathematics. You know, people rarely brag about not being able to read, but people will tell you all the time, well, I'm not that good at math. We, as the adults, have to provide the space for the young people to make the demand and to take charge, but then we have to be vulnerable and sort of get out of the way. And I would like to get everybody involved in this because we're trying to spread the world. We're trying to make this a nationwide thing. So I see the Alliance as a home for keeping the narrative fresh. Sometimes we get so embroiled in the work on the ground and you have your head down because you're doing transactions in schools and communities. Somebody needs to capture that and keep the narrative out in the public way so that people know what are we trying to do, why are we trying to do it, and that we recruit the public, the nation, the world, to a point of view. Because without a point of view, anything is okay, including leaving some people behind. But with a point of view that's being managed by something like an alliance, people don't get a chance to step away from doing what is right. Disparities in education are really the main thing that continue to create divisions in society. And so it's much more than just dealing with educational issues, it will have societal implications as well. We know that the struggle continues, that the work goes on, and that we, we ourselves are the architects of our rescue, that we ourselves can facilitate the change that's need, needed, that we ourselves can change the narrative and the discussion and articulate that profoundly about education and citizenship. We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. It's a simple declarative sentence, and we have to decide if we are going to be a we the people in this country.